roll call. Yeah, it doesn't matter. As long as someone comes to report on that. Okay. Well, Christine's father broke his femur or something, and she's in the hospital. I said, well, are you going to send somebody else? Oh, gee. Because we sent it to the law department. Michael, I need a piece, too. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Six. Here. You want to make it three? Three. <laughs> we got to look like to, we're... We're going to have to support the... to check.
Okay, good evening. Uh, it's 516. Sorry for the delay. We've just been waiting uh, for some folks here. But this is a meeting of the Rules Subcommittee. I believe we are being televised as well. Um, and there are two motions that have been referred to the subcommittee. So uh, one we had previously spoken on, and that was a policy regarding protest in the City Council Chamber. The second one was a motion by Councilor Conway and Councilor Leahy relative to uh, the placement of motions on the agenda and relocating it to the beginning rather than where it currently is at the end. So uh, before we get into that, Mr. Clerk, could you please call the roll? Chairman Elliott. Here. Council Mercia. Here. Council Conway. Yeah. Three present. Um, so with that, um, be, uh, that, we have Rachel please Brown from the Law Department um, Assistant City Solicitor. Thank you for joining us. Uh, as I mentioned the f uh, on the first one, we, uh, deal with the first motion and that was um, we had met once previously and this was following um, a city council subcommittee on the environment um, that took place and it, there was a protest in the council chamber and the meeting the meeting had uh, subsequently had to be uh, recessed um, and with that so a motion <clears throat> maybe a number of motions came forward on a policy regarding protesting in the city council chamber including the use of signs and any other um, expressions, if you will, to, to um, I guess, uh, protest or expression of freedom of speech is what I was looking at. So this was referred back to the law department, and this was a number of months ago. So I just wanted to get an update, <clears throat> excuse me, on where we're at. I know there was, uh, there was even at the this city council meeting way back when, discussion of, of potentially uh, preventing the use of signs in the council chamber because of a number of reasons, including uh, obstruction of view or um, danger. You know, some of the signs are relatively big. Um, along with setting up the, the possibility of a, of a place where people can protest, which <clears throat> if I recall, some members of the council weren't too favorable to that. So. Before we go any further, uh, we uh, the intent of the motion was to merely allow for people to express themselves, yet at the same time allow for city council business uh, not to be disrupted to the point where it's counterproductive or a meeting had to be recessed. So with that, members of the subcommittee, do you uh, anything before we go to the city solicitor? Council Mercier. Are we talking about the first one Correct. being the uh, demonstration? Correct. Whatever? I, these, these are my feelings on that. I firmly believe that people have a right to freedom of speech. There's no doubt about that, and we're not here to stop that. But I think there's a place for it, and I don't think the council chamber is the place. When we're conducting business and we're trying to move it along, I mean, anybody's welcome to come up to the podium and say that we're not doing the right thing and criticize us. They have every right to do that. But I don't think that they have a right to chant and yell and hold up signs. I don't believe this is the place for that. There's a certain order of decorum that should take place in these chambers out of respect for these great halls, this great hall. I believe, and this is just my opinion, we had a protest sometime, well, I won't say protest, it was a demonstration. It was a very peaceful demonstration put on by the union members because they wanted a PLA and they didn't get it. I understand they went down, they were all in front of City Hall in a designated area which they thought was a designated area. They were well behaved. There was a police officer there. I don't think a police officer scares some people that want to demonstrate and hang from bridges or rafters or whatever.
but these union people were very respectful. They each said their speech and they, they chanted and, and they clapped and it was in a designated spot. At least that's what we thought. I don't know why we can't say that's the spot that it should be. I don't know why, what harm that does when you designate a certain area where people can protest. I, I don't, it, they're not invading this building, they're outside of the building. I, I don't see a problem with that and yet I don't know if it can be done, but I don't see the harm in that. Um, it, I know that teachers had their strike many times, many years, uh, and they walked the whole perimeter of the around there and they held signs and I, I found no problem with that. Uh, they were respectful. There's a way you can do it without throwing yourself on the floor and chanting and screaming and refusing to get up and having the police have to pull you up and it just leads to confrontation. These are my <clears throat> opinions and I'm not saying I'm right but this is my feeling. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Conway. Yeah, thank you. Uh Mr. Chairman, um, I, I agree with um, certainly uh, what Councilor Mercy was talking about as far as the you know freedom of speech is concerned, uh, and I know myself that you know over the years being a, a member of the union, uh, we uh, we would voice our opinion through signs or whatever it may be. But if I recall, they were usually outside uh, just to let the public officials know uh, how we felt and uh, I think it was done in a very respectful way just as the um, uh, the union people just re recently came in and, and again it was a it was in a respectful manner also I think that the 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 problem that I see at this point when you have the signs inside inside the chambers and I think that's where the legalities come in whether that's allowed or not, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. But I, I also want to throw this out on the table, too, and that is, um, do you know if uh, at the State House, whether uh, when they're conducting business in the, in the, uh, the uh, House or the Senate, whether uh, they're allowed to, to have signs in, the, in their chambers? Do you have any idea on that? I don't know that, no. Okay. I, I think these, uh, uh, again, maybe, you know, maybe there's already a template for this. Uh, we don't have to reinvent the wheel, but I think if, if we're trying to do business, uh, I, I don't see anything wrong with some form of a protest. Uh, and certainly, uh, as council, as we see uh, how people are voicing their opinion, but to stop the meeting, uh, I, as far as I'm concerned, I think is, is uncalled for. And I think that's probably what we're trying to get some type of a ruling uh, as far as the signs of concern and exactly what type of behavior is acceptable in the chambers and, which, and what is not acceptable legally. Okay, so um, I can speak to a few of those things. I think, you know, there are measures that can be taken. Um, certainly within the chamber, um, people, everybody has the opportunity to express their opinions if they register to speak on an issue. They're certainly welcome to do that. Um, and so there isn't a silencing on the matters that are on the agenda because those are open for the public to come in and express themselves. Um, and also in any you know, public building, um, we, if it's a forum of a particular sort, so this is a forum for holding meetings, you know, city council meetings and other meetings, um, we are allowed to have rules that, would, that enable us to you know, facilitate the business that the forum is for, so allowing the space to function for the, for the appropriate purposes. So with those um, parameters, um, the, the city solicitor, I, I will say, yeah, I'm filling in for her. She's unfortunately unavailable today and she has prepared a more lengthy memo on these issues, um, which I haven't had access to yet. Um, but um, in terms of 
does it, I, I remember when this came up initially, the idea of a designated area to protest outside uh, was floated. And I think part of the motivation for that was actually to provide a, a kind of safe space for protests. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a place where people know that this is somewhere they can go and, um, you know, have their signs, have their comments, the, and, and it's going to be a place where they're allowed to do that. Um, I think it does potentially run into the, you know, the issue that if you sort of cordon off an area almost, there's a lot of other public places where people do have the right to um, express themselves under the First Amendment in a, in a public sp space that isn't sort of specifically um, curtailed in some way like it might be in the council chamber. So I would suggest that probably a more appropriate way of doing that is to um, designate areas where protests are not allowed. So, you know, for example, in the city chambers, um, in the hallway right outside, or even really in the building. Um, it could be that, you know, it's not allowed in the building. It would have to be outside of the building. Um, with respect to signage, um, I think it is a little bit tricky because, um, you know, signs are speech, they have language, um, they convey expressions. Um, however, the issue often in this chamber anyway is with this, the signs are, are also disruptive because they are large, they obstruct the view of um, people, whether they're uh, watching on TV or actually here in the chamber. And so, you know, certainly a, a rule um, that had to do with the appropriate nature of signs. Um, whether, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not prepared to say sort of here and now whether it could be a kind of blanket no signs or whether it would be um, you know, of a certain size or um, held in a certain manner. But you could certainly have um, some, some regulation on, on that. Um, the recommendation would be to have a motion now to have the law department work with the police department to put a formal recommendation on the agenda at the city council meeting next week, um, if, that, if that makes Yeah, that's fine. I know that uh, the city solicitor did, has done quite a bit of work on this particular issue, and she's having some personal um, tied up with a personal issue and I'm fine with that um, I understand your point with the signs I think it's a slippery slope unfortunately and and I do I I, I recognize the yeah. challenge with that size is one thing but I also think because uh, I personally don't think that we should uh, have signs in here for for a number of reasons one is how do we start regulating what goes on those signs in any other language um, you know, it could be some some type of language that we don't find suitable or not, uh, or you know whether it's derogatory in nature. It's all very subjective, yeah, and you in my spoke opinion. To the um, a kind of more general standard of decorum as yeah. well, uh, which I do think would also be appropriate. Um, and you know, if a sign fell into that category, then that. That right. could be encompassed. And again, I, it's just, I just don't want to say that the issue of signs is an easy one um, and that it, it, there may be issues with a blanket approach, but we will we'll get back with a recommendation. It's a matter that. of enforcing and who is going to know, in my opinion, okay, how many signs can you have? Are you blocking somebody? You know, and that's what we have run into, quite frankly, yeah. on more than one occasion. So in my opinion, um, I like the idea of looking at what other governing bodies use as part of their rules. I've never seen a sign in either the Senate or the House chamber. Yeah, we can certainly look at that. And I do think with the size of this chamber, right. you know, it's pr perhaps more of an issue here than it might be in some other places. Come on in, Celine. Um, you Celine. can have a seat if you'd like. <laughs> please, please identify yourself for the record. <laughs> we miss you, Celine. Please come to the podium. <laughs> Name and address. <laughs> We're never going to get any more help out of the law department. <laughs> uh, Council Conway, while uh, the solicitor is... Yeah, I, I think that uh, this is not a new situation. Yeah. I'm sure it happens t 
time and time and time again. So when we talk about a slippery slope or, you know, could some of them be used and some of them not be used, I would think there's already a ruling on this that we could just go to from the state to find out what, what the appropriate action that can be taken. Because again, you have, you have all the towns and cities, mm. they obviously have some type of rules that have to take place. And if we're infringing on, on someone's rights, needless to say, it would have been brought forward and there had to be some type of ruling uh, from the court on it. So well, I, I think that it, it, that's what we have to do is take a look at how, how it's done. Yeah, I, th this reminds me of the sign ordinance quite frankly, a number of years ago. Some communities do have sign ordinances that allow only for them to be put up for 10 days. And we have been told that that's unconstitutional. People can put up signs for as long as they, at, at any particular point in time in the year, it doesn't have to be around an election, but they have to be taken down 30 days and then put back up, which is merely impossible, impossible to enforce. Right, Council Mercy? And I remember in the city of Lowell, the rule stated that you could put up your campaign sign 17 days before a primary. Now they're going up in July, for God's sakes, aren't they? Yeah, that, that, the ordinance did change, saying yeah. it's a, SJ, yeah, SJC do came it. down. So in any event, I, I understand the point with the signs, but um, I, I'd be interesting to see what other governing bodies did. Something there, um, uh, Madam? This is the letter. Um, from May 2018 uh, that was to, uh, to the City Council regarding proposed rule changes, um, which I, I could read to you. Okay. Please. So, Rule 26, meetings open to the public. Um, at any meeting open to the public, citizens and employees of the city and business owners or council who represents each group shall have a reasonable opportunity to be heard in regard to any matter on the agenda subject to the following regulations. Any person desiring to be heard shall register his or her name and address and the matter upon which he or she desires to be heard with the city clerk in a book to be provided, therefore no later than 6.30 on the evening of the meeting. Such person shall speak on the matter to which he or she has registered and shall keep all comments germane to that issue. Such person shall speak for not more than five minutes and shall be subject to rule number nine with respect to the preservation of decorum and order. In addition, people may register by telephone prior to the closing of the city clerk's office, as well as by mail by giving their names and addresses and the matter on the agenda they desire to speak on. As far and as possible and within the above limits, the chair shall allow equal time to both sides of the question. Persons who do not reside within the city or who are not employees of the city and business owners or council who represent each group will not be permitted to speak unless they are endorsed by a member of the city council and providing that a majority of the city council does not object. Where the public interest requires, any matter may be laid over for hearing from um, a regular or special meeting of the city council to open a meeting of the committee of the whole. And rule, um, so the proposed amendment is to include uh, on that rule the following. On rule, on rule number nine or rule, uh, rule number, number 26? 26. So rule 26 is what I just read. Yeah. Right, but it references nine that that has. Yeah, it references rule nine, which speaks language. to the preservation of decorum and order. And just from memory, there is a rule in the council rules that uh, perhaps Mike knows this actually. Yeah, but, yeah, it does, it's just a general kind yeah. of general rule that says you got to maintain decorum in, in, in the, the chamber. The mayor is, um, you know, authorized to maintain decorum in the chamber. Um, so the am proposed amendment would be, no person shall be permitted to speak, testify, or otherwise participate in any council meeting, hearing, or working session unless permitted to do so by the presiding officer or committee chair. Members of the public are welcome in the gallery of the council chamber when the council is in session. No demonstration of approval or disapproval from members of the public will be permitted, including but not limited to signs, placards, banners, cheering, clapping, booing, etc. 
and if such demonstrations are made, the gallery or public seating area will be cleared. Further, there shall be an established free speech zone to be located on the grounds of the City Hall. The areas as designated by the Superintendent of Police shall be clearly marked with signage and boundary markers. Once established, the free speech zone shall also be designated on a map and permanently posted on the City Clerk's Notice Board as well as electronically on the City of Lowell web page. So that was the, the zone idea that we were discussing okay. earlier. And um, whether it makes sense to have a zone or to have a kind of prohibition. Right, I mean, I, I think there was, um, if I recall, there were a number of members of the City Council that didn't support that zone. And I understand, I, I would prefer to go the route that you have suggested and identify areas where they they cannot, because there's plenty of other public areas where they could and should be allowed to, as long as it's not in this council chamber or maybe even just, you know, yeah. the hallway. A anywhere else, as long as it doesn't disrupt, I think that's the intent, as long as it doesn't disrupt a, a governing body from conducting business. So yeah. I, I, <clears throat> I'd like to entertain that motion that you suggested that the uh, law department bring forward a recommendation. With the police department to put a uh, recommendation, a formal recommendation on the agenda. Do we want to say next week because it's a, a late election yeah, I, uh, I primary time? Can we say the first Tuesday in October? There is a meeting the following week because October starts. Right. It, so that's what I would say. Could we not put it next week sure. but the first Second Tuesday in October? So, Mr. Uh, Clerk, we won't have uh, a report on the agenda from the Rules Subcommittee, or will we? Well, yeah, we're going to uh, I can. You, you, I, can will, report, I will, Council, you can. I'll report out that the, <clears throat> the policy is going to, the proposed policy will come forward on October 5th, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, motion by Council Mercia, seconded by Council Conway. Council Conway on the motion. Yeah, just, just a quick clarification. Um, when you started mentioning a, a number of those rules, for example, the five-minute rule, how would in how would individuals know about that? How would the public know about uh, these rules that we we might institute, whether it's designated areas or what can be used mm -hmm. or not used signs inside the uh, chambers, or whether they only have five minutes to speak or less? Uh, how would they how would they know that? How would they get that information, Mr. Clerk? Usually, it's through my office, um, Councillor. Um, I, I think what, what would probably be, you know, when this, uh, if we're establishing zones and some other changes are coming about, um, maybe we can post on, on the website under my department or, or probably on the face of the website those those general areas that are, and um, we can move forward that way. Also, um, in terms of procedure, I think when the recommendation comes down that oh, yeah. it has to go to a to a, a public hearing. Uh, in order to amend the rules of the council. It's a public hearing and it's two city council meetings, I believe, right, Mr. Clark? What's that? I think it's, there, there were two readings of it. Two readings and one public in order, hearing. Yeah, it'll, yeah. It'll, in order, it'll order to have change the rule. It'll have to come in. Um, it, it could come in on a, on a recommendation um, from the law department um, on the 1st of October meeting. Yep. At that point, it would probably be some type of you know, if it gets changed, drafted, down for a first reading, right. and then sent out to a public hearing. Right. Right, okay. It's not just a public hearing, and then it has to have another city council reading. Okay, so that's the motion. Uh, roll call, Mr. Clerk, please. Chairman Elliott. Here, yes. Council Mercia. Yes. Council Conway. Yes. Three yes. Okay. Thank you, Assistant City Solicitor Brown, for pitch hitting <laughs> literally in a moment's notice. Um, I think this is helpful as we move forward. Uh, and it was, uh, this issue has been out there for a little bit, so. Um, yeah, and I think it was helpful to hear again what, you know, the main concerns. Right. So we can, we can formulate the recommendation. Very good. Okay, thank you. So the other issue was uh, a motion on Council uh, Conway to, and Council Leahy regarding the, the placement of the motion section on the agenda. Council of Conway. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think that one of the issues that uh, that came up, it seems as though, <clears throat> excuse me, there were a, a number of weeks that were rather lengthy. We had the agenda was really packed, 
and uh, the motions are towards the end of that agenda. And um, quite often, um, you're racing through those motions or you're not getting to those motions and they end up going on to, let's say, the next meeting. And that's when, uh, when I was talking with um, uh, Councilor Leahy, um, because Councilor Leahy and myself were also on the school committee for a number of years too. And the motion seemed to be um, you know, up towards the front of the agenda. And a as we all know, many of these motions are put on because of our constituents um, ask us to put them on. So I think what we were doing is we, we were just trying to figure out is there a way that we could move that up. I'm not saying right at the very beginning, but move it up a bit so that we do give justice to, to each and every motion. That was the, uh, that was the thrust of, the, uh, of our motion. Council Mercia. So would, well, <clears throat> usually they accept uh, the minutes of the last meeting and this report and that, and then by the time you know it, in the special presentations that the mayor says, today we are gonna talk to so-and-so about this, so by the time they get through the formalities of that, it's seven o'clock and we have to go into the public hearings automatically. That's the rule that we don't change. So are you probably suggesting right after the um, public hearings then? Perhaps, I, I think okay. that again, uh, I, I'm not, and I don't think uh, Councilor Leahy was saying specifically where it should be. It's just that once again, towards the, it, at the, literally at the very end, so. it seems as though that you don't, sometimes you don't get as much, um, you know, enough a time to really do justice to some of the motions. So, so can I suggest this, because I, <clears throat> I think you're right. I think that we have, uh, business, city manager business, um, orders of the day, votes. Um, and I, I see more often than not, it's we do the prayer, then we do the, uh, the minutes. And moment of silences. Moment of silences. And then we go right into motion responses. Does it make more sense to move those, which take up an awful lot of time, does it make more sense to move those back with motions and motion responses? It seems like they should just be all together. I, I, and now we would get through all of the city manager stuff, which more often than not doesn't take a lot of time. Right, I, I mean, I think it's something that we should have a discussion on yep. uh, with, the, uh, with the total uh, council. And, and also, uh, the, city <coughs> the city manager helps um, you know, put, that, put that together, her and the staff, and to see if, if what you just suggested, uh, councilor, whether that makes a, a, a little bit more sense, and, and it could. All I'm saying is that I, do, I don't really care how it's moved up, but as long as it's moved up somewhere so it does justice um, to these motions. And I know we're all, we, we're all trying to do the best we can, but I think that uh, uh, it, it might be something to bring up, uh, not the next meeting, but perhaps the, the meeting after to discuss it. I, I wouldn't have a problem with swapping it around with the responses to the motions. That's quite lengthy as well. Yeah. I think that that would be a good well, fair think, swap. I think, I think what uh, uh, the chairman just mentioned is somehow uh, meshing the two of them together. Is that is that? I think it makes saying? sense. My only concern with moving the motions up, sometimes we have 30 motions, and if we spend, you know, two hours of the city council meeting just on, you know, motions, and, and sometimes I think they're rudimentary, sometimes they could be solved by a phone call. Right. Um, you know, sometimes in the <clears throat> summertime, there's, we have 30 motions, and then we're going to spend the first two hours on motions versus right. public hearings and uh, votes, ordinance changes, et cetera. So I, I understand your point. I, I'm a little leery of putting them up front. Uh, I wouldn't, I, I understand where you're coming from, Mr. Chairman. The fact of what I think is, let's say there's 15 motions and we've seen that. Sometimes you have like five or six people that are here waiting for that. They, right. We tend to think that they're gonna be here all night. Right. So we suspend the rules to allow this particular motion to come out of order because so we want to get these people out of here. I think that's the greatest thing. So well, I, we can always do that if you have that situation. Right. 
I, I mean, I, I, I agree with you, but I, I will say that that, that happens quite often. Yeah. Uh, so, um, again, I mean, I think it's something that uh, Council Alehi and myself thought it would be a good idea to, to have a discussion, see if it makes any sense, uh, so that we can do justice to the responses uh, and the motions. And if the, if the body feels that it's fine the way it is right now, then so be it. That's, that's, up, to, uh, that's up to the Council as a, as, as a whole. Mr. Well, Mr. Clerk, do you have any suggestions? Oh, I'm sorry, Council Mercy. Discussion is always healthy. Yeah, I, I, um, but my suggestion would be that, you know, again, the, the, the body was trying to make it light for the next meeting because of the election night. Uh, maybe perhaps um, one of the members of the subcommittee could put forward a motion, um, a motion before the council regarding city council discussion regarding position of the motions in, um, in the order of the agenda. Have that discussion that night. If there's a consensus about where to put it, then you begin the, I believe it's another rules change that we have to go through in terms of um, a public hearing and all that, but I'll have to double check on that. But I think the way to get the consensus of the board about the positioning, where it wants to be positioned is maybe through a motion and have a discussion that night regarding that. Yeah, I, I think it's a good idea. And I, I also think it's a good idea that to have, you know, again, the city solicitor way, excuse me, the uh, city manager way in on this, what, what might, you know, it, it might make sense to do it or it might make sense just to keep it the way it is. Uh, I'd like to have uh, input from her. Sure, yeah. that's fine. So are you suggesting that we make Okay, so we'll entertain a motion that uh, the rules subcommittee suggests the full council deliberate on the placement of, so, the city council sent that to us to come back with the recommendation. So our recommendation is to give it back to them. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I think, you know, regarding a motion, a full discussion about where you want to place it. It seems to be the piece of movement on here, but where do you want it to go? Okay, we want the full council to weigh in. So motion is to, to bring this issue back to the... To uh, find a more appropriate... Uh, to okay, so the motion is um, for... The rules subcommittee to recommend the full city council discuss take, the yeah take this motion should, up yeah and with uh, mm -hmm. recommendation or input from the city manager right motion by councilor Conway seconded by Councilor Mercia all those in favor signify by saying aye, aye. and they oppose that motion carries any further business before you know the only other thing about motions I would like to. I don't know if there's a way for us to set criteria on the intent of a motion or whether it's substantive or whether it can be f completed by a phone call. Uh, sometimes there are motions that, you know, to, I don't know, pick up trash somewhere and then by the time the city council meeting is I, there, I, it's done. I, I, I don't know if that's necessarily the best idea because, you know, what Subjective. what's important to me might not be quite as important to you and or, or, the, or, the, or another counselor. And I think now you would be starting to evaluate and measure each motion. So I, I don't yeah, think I, that would be, I, I think well, that would be really bogging the process. Well, here's my opinion. I could make 10 motions every week. That's not the point. The point is <clears throat> when I get calls of this, that, or the other, I make a phone call to try to make it right happen and alleviate the possibility of me making a motion in the first place. So instead of those 10 motions that I could make, I don't have a, a motion because the only time I have a motion that you see on the agenda is because I couldn't resolve it on my own and I need help to do that right. and I want to see it in black and white and that's where I go with it. Okay. Um, we'll just suggest it saves that, time, it? it saves, it gets things done quicker in some respects, and that's my opinion, and that's what I've done right along. Okay. Well, motion, motion to adjourn? To adjourn. Thank yes. you. By yes. both Council Conway, by all of us. Yeah. All those in favor signify by saying aye, and the opposed. This meeting stands adjourned.